people today have been lured into a spider-like web of artificial legal entities created by governments through paper, fiat currency, credit, and corrupt education systems. Money and commerce are the yardsticks of the modern lifestyle. Even the churches have fallen under this bewitching spell. No longer do the churches stand as independent moral guardians as they once used to. Today there is no separation of powers between church and state, and governments increasingly are dismissive of human life issues such as abortion, eugenics, euthanasia, resuscitation, assisted suicide, genocide, ethnic cleansing, cloning, embryonic stem cell manipulation, water pollution, soil degradation, and deforestation. See, we've been deceived into surrendering our natural rights in exchange for state contracted privileges. The state, or crown, is able to exploit your productive power, then proceed to milk you of the results and claim ownership over all before it. Prosperity comes from sources outside of a job, such as investments or business. Not many people can get rich on their salary unless they're corporate officers who, who uh, loot their shareholder funds. We've been made subservient to a man-made system of rewards and penalties in order to gain power and control over our creative energy and all that we're capable of producing. The product of our manual labor, the sweat of our collective brows, part of which was intended for our creator, or whoever you want to call the higher power, as a thanksgiving, and the ethic on which charity is based, has been siphoned off by a Caesar-like modern-day government in a brilliant deception of statutory smoke and mirrors. In the beginning, as people started to live together in societies, there was nothing to prevent individuals from infringing upon the rights and freedoms of each other. Once that happened, there were only two choices. Either protect ourselves or elect a group of individuals to protect our rights for us. Well, we chose the latter, and man-made government was born. A government's strategy is to implement slave-like control of its citizens. Governments had to uh, invent a system that would not directly violate people's natural rights, but at the same time allow them to control and own everything created and produced by man, a natural energy source, which is man. The technique was to create a secondary corporate entity, an artificial legal entity, that mimicked the existence of the original flesh and blood living soul so well it was for the most part invisible and could only be readily identified in the written form. In the spoken form there is no discernible difference. For every living soul the government through semantics and its birth registries secretly creates a mirror-like identity called a corporation soul. That's soul, S-O-L-E, not S-O-U-L. There's a difference. Now, when I say John Doe and John Doe, they may sound the same, but you can see the difference in the written form. Now, when a noun is written in all capital letters, the rules of English grammar says it's either fictitious or without substance, or it's a company name, a corporation, in other words. So, when it's in all capital letters, the rules of English grammar say it's either fictitious or it's a corporation. Consequently, the government, as creator of a corporation, can now demand anything it wants from their corporation, simply by manipulating the statute or the corporation's law. One of the ways governments captured our natural rights and freedoms has been the creation of artificial legal entities. And through their statutes, they have created companies and corporations, which are actually dead corporate entities, through the clever manipulation of language by the redefinition of certain words.
one of the most powerful, magical, and difficult to detect tools and weapons used against mankind by aggressors and exploiters is language. The basic tool for the manipulation of truth is the manipulation of words. They call this semantics. It's the manipulation of words. If one can control the meaning of words, one can control the people who use those words. For example, the word person and persons has been redefined in the interpretation clauses of their statutes as a corporation. How many people would interpret the word person to mean a corporation? Understand that your government wants you to assume this ordinary meaning of the word person so as to deceive you into reading and interpreting their statute in their favor. You might like to refer to Sir William Blackstone's commentaries on the laws of England. Sir William was a preeminent juror in his time and an acknowledged expert in English law. He confirmed in his expert capacity that there are two persons recognized in statute law, natural person and artificial person. However, one still needs to approach this thinking with caution, as natural person is often taken to mean human being, and the dictionary actually defines human being as a half monster, or primate mammal, or person. Therefore, in statutory or legal matters, we should be very careful when using the term person, natural or artificial. You're better off using the term man, woman, or flesh and blood living soul. And this is so to avoid any misinterpretation or misunderstanding. And here's how this whole process begins. When mothers give birth to babies, they volunteer through the medical and hospital staff all the associated information which is then recorded onto a government information database. They call this the birth certificate. This act of recording is the basis of a registry. Births, deaths, marriages. At some later point, mother or child would then apply to the government for a certified extract that we have come to know as a birth certificate. Governments, through the prism of their central banks, use this registry information to create government bonds or negotiable instruments against which credit is advanced by the international funding community and repaid in the form of income tax by the artificially created legal entity known under statute law as a taxpayer. The entire monetary system is built like a house of cards on this commercial sleigh of hand. Member governments have established reserve banks that act as central banks whose policies are influenced by global financial institutions such as the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. These, in turn, filter into the BIS or Bank for International Settlements, being the world's premier central banking institution.